Testing, testing, one, two. <clears throat> testing, one, two, three. So I'm getting crosstalk here. Got to test the audio. <laughs> All right, hopefully that's okay. You guys can let me know if it's off. Just did a quick and dirty check. It's been raining a lot. We had uh, lots of puddles and stuff that are starting to dry up again, but I was able to find some wet leaf debris and some standing water in a few spots around the um, complex here. So I thought I would do some more samples. This one I'm going to do some with the dissecting scope too. Because the wet leaf litter might be interesting under the dissecting scope, which is lower power. So, let's see what we can see. Adjust my window here. More brightness and contrast. Take a look around for those little critters. This is um, basically what's left of a puddle. It was in a driveway nearby. So it had a lot of cars passing through, dogs and pedestrians passing through, leaf litter, <clears throat> other kinds of stuff just sitting there for who knows how long. So it looks like it's a good collection spot for hangers on as well as um, stuff living in the water. Those my optics are a little bit dirty here. I gotta clean these things. So I saw when I first turned this on I saw something. But now I have to go find it because it's swimming around pretty fast. something hmm. clusters of dead plant material stuff like that a nice little sheet of uh, cells from probably a leaf not getting too close I'm just doing, looking for movement stuff right now cells there. Maybe I will check on that. <clears throat> Give me a moment here. I'm going to mute this so I can shoot some air into there and clean the optics a bit. Do not want to hear that on the microphone. Just got to find my air can. There we go. This should help a little bit. Pardon me while I mute.
Yeah. Didn't help that much. That thing is still there, but let's have to ignore it for now in the corner. Ah, there we go. There's a character. Beautiful. Got a couple. Small and big. Very nice. Looks like one of those little Stylonkia guys. With the uh, accentuated Siri, which is the uh, thicker versions of cilia at basically the top and bottom of the cell, the, the little points top and bottom, which is, you know, essentially, for lack of a better term, head and tail, because as you can see the direction they swim, the top part has like a little bit of a gullet there, you can kind of see out of focus, so it tends to swim in that direction, but it does occasionally back up, so those are Siri, they're fused cilia that make them pretty thick so very easy to see on on camera on a microscope and there's that little guy next to that in that cluster that's kind of cool you can see that little guy swimming around the debris as well it just stopped for some reason so this is a ciliate here. The little guy might be a flagellate. This movement's a little bit more jerky. But I want to follow this guy because he's nice. This is not even very high power. This is uh, about 100 power. My little... Uh, free ambient streaming player here for background noise uh, music and stuff I turned on the little uh, meditation like Tibetan bell sound so gives a kind of a relaxing eastern quality but also has a um, for anyone into synthesis sounds like a, a little bit like an FM synthesizer I know Robbie doesn't watch this but uh, this one goes out to Robbie Puricelli <laughs> so, he likes Yamaha DX7 and other D uh, FM synthesizers that are famous for gongs and bells and stuff. So, anyway, this character's out looking for yum yums. And luckily, he's not moving very quick. He's very jerky, though. You can see it's. Some animals have this feeding behavior. And some of them do it as like a defensive mechanism. It's like a, either exposure to a chemical it doesn't like, or a potential something it perceives as a maybe a prey item nearby. In this case, definitely mistakenly, because there's nothing there to harass it. But uh, it has its own little quirks, just like we all do. And I'm sure that could be a diagnostic for even uh, a couple of the species in this genus. And I don't know the genus uh, for sure. Uh, I believe Stylonky is not a... I had to look it up again, but I think Stylonky is actually a genus, not just like a family name. Part of a family name. But uh, So some of these movements might be diagnostic to help you uh, identify them. Because some of the stuff... and and some of these animals and microscopic plants uh, can be very hard without really good scopes, really good conditions, and some painstaking work to identify them. Sometimes they're very easy, like uh, Paramecium caudatum, which is like the most common Paramecium around, pretty easy to tell, or um, there's uh, Amoeba proteus is very common compared to some of the Amoeba around. But a lot of these animals, you're lucky if you get them into just a group for various reasons. But yeah, this is a nice little specimen. And again, pond water, or puddle water, I should say, out of a driveway from rain. And these are ephemeral pools that, you know, show up briefly during rain. We've had a lot of rain lately in, in Northern California, so... Um, it's not hard to find standing water. The problem is it's also been fairly warm today, so most of it kind of evaporated. 
except for the shady areas or the areas that uh, might have some runoff, maybe from watering, but they didn't turn the sprinklers off, um, runoff from cars that are wet, stuff like that. So, but I was able to find the spot, and it was a nice little uh, puddle. Nice air bubble there. Perfectly spherical. I can probably switch this over to a little bit of oblique lighting and get some more detail on this guy. Let's see. Oh, that's a dark field. Try that first. It's always nice. Like little jewels in the in the darkness. Now you can really see the cilia very well, beating furiously. In this case, the cilia and the ciri, the thicker cilia, fuse together at the top and bottom, and they're actually quite long too. They stick out further than the rest of the cilia, it seems. And he's got all kinds of little characters swimming around him. And you can see the, the cilia pumping action as it's cycling around, is drawing in stuff, creating little microcurrents. So sometimes that's a feeding thing, sometimes they're just moving stuff around, it bounces off of them. This one has a nice kind of uh, oral groove action. It's like a gullet thing where it, um, it's a single cell, but it has structure of the cell that's like a primitive version of a throat or a mouth. And it doesn't swallow, it actually uh, forms vesicles at the, uh, the gullet interface with the water. And those vesicles uh, brought into the cell forming a food vacuole and digestive enzymes go into the food vacuole. So it basically creates a micro stomach for its meals that lasts as long as the meals and then it uh, breaks it apart, recycles it for next, you know, for more um, vacuoles to be created. So the cell is just basically a giant factory with all kinds of <clears throat> electrical and, and uh, biomechanical machine works inside the cell. That guy really got out of there fast. That's weird. It's very jerky. Oh, look at that guy cruising by. That was, that was some, some kind of weird stuff going on. And because it's a drop of water, but there's enough thickness at the, at the scale that, as you see, I occasionally have to refocus to catch this guy. It's going up and down as well as um, side to side and and you know X and Y as well as the Z plane. And those little guys zipping by sometimes are way out of focus because they're way behind it. It's a nice little specimen, though. Yeah, see when it hits that thing, it bounces off and it kind of jerks. It's rejecting the, the large particles. Let me try a little bit of dark, a little bit of oblique lighting. This is fun because you get like a 3D effect. If I can get this set just right here. There we go. A little more 3D looking. Bring out some of the details in the... Uh, not just the inside of the cell, but the outside of the cell. You see like a groove there going down. Almost makes it look like a coffee bean. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? 
Oh, there we go. It's way over there. So you see less of the particles in this mode compared to the dark field, but you get some better contrast and structural details of the cell. Um, compared to, well you saw the typical view that I used when I started looking at this character. Just a classic transmission microscope, high contrast, if you turn up Turn the contrast up, you get the detail, but you lose some of the colors. Uh, I put this little diaphragm for the lighting, but this is so much more interesting when you play with this. It's like being a cinematographer. You have all these tools at your disposal. Different filters, different uh, f-stops, different uh, you know lighting levels, and uh, you can really get some pretty amazing shots with just a single microscope with all these different settings. What's really a shame is, uh, you know, having studied all this in, uh, you know, pre-college and then a ton in college. Um, not, some of these techniques I'm showing you guys today, not one of my instructors or other classmates who are even remotely into microscopes knew about these techniques. It's just one of those things that was there, but nobody really knew how to, how to take advantage of them. And uh, now it's like, you know, decades later I'm catching up doing all kinds of fun stuff with this uh, imaging techniques and man all the amount of stuff I could have seen with better detail and as much fun as I was having it would have been a hell of a lot more fun knowing the tricks I know now as well as you know getting nice photographs and video and stuff but uh, you know at least I figured them out in time to start doing this stuff because these little tricks are really nice for getting some good visuals. And this is not even a good camera. I'm actually getting a better camera pretty soon. This is just a basic, uh, you know, USB uh, microscope camera from China. Um, well, the clarity is pretty good, but it's it's got too much stuff set to auto. You can't really manually control it that much. The exposure is. As you can see, every time I, I tweak it a bunch, <clears throat> it auto exposes everything and there's no way to turn it off. Not only that, but it's giving me this kind of, you see that pinkish halo on the left side of the frame? It's some kind of weird internal reflection. I can't get it to go away, so it's. I put up with it for a while, it's really getting out of my nerves, so I'm gonna have to get a much better camera. Uh, also, with a better camera, I can do live slow motion. Uh, for some of these fast guys and also little structures going in slow motion you can see them much better and uh, so it would be a much better experience with a better camera get a wider field of view all that kind of stuff but this is doing a pretty good job I mean this guy looks really nice at this camera you just have to tweak the lighting just right now he's on a little circuit. You get a lot of these guys on like a hunting pattern. Where they go in like a little, either a circle, or in this guy, in this case, this guy almost does like a rectangle. Or a square, what is these sharp turns. And jerky movements. Let me just leave it here and let him do his little, little circuit. He's changing positions. Luckily, he's fairly slow, so it's able to track him quite well. And I'm, I'm going to briefly go in for a closer look because it's not moving too much. Let's try that. Let's do a quick close up. Still moving quite a bit, but I can try to chase it here. 
Oh, they're trying to get people too seasick. There we go. So there's some nice colors in there. Partly from its own structures and stuff it's eaten. Yeah, he's moving a lot more than I expected. Let me go back out and find it again. Find a spot where it's not moving quite as much. Get on a little circuit. Seems to like this area. Let's try that. There we go. Wish I had a better field of view. This is so annoying. This is 400 power. So it's a pretty big cell. But it's moving enough that it's hard to keep it in the field. There we go. I could find a circuit where it stays consistent enough and I can just leave it there. Let's try this. Let it drift into view. The problem with moving it so much is the it's too hard to track it and focus up and down smoothly. The image gets quite messy. So you just have to kind of pick a spot and let it come to you. on here live uh, have any questions or wants to chat please jump into the chat any comments or questions let me go find this guy my uh, microscope itself actually has a little lower power than what the camera's doing so I can find him a little easier without having to change exposure or change the uh, focal plane just gotta find it first Okay, where'd you go, man? It's gonna make me go to lower power again. Ah, there we go. Alright, quickly back to higher power now. Just track it. a lot. It keeps moving up and down a bunch. Come on, buddy. Try to trace it here with the... There we go. Uh, went a different direction. There you go. Boy, it's really moving now. Before it was barely moving, now it's just on a rampage. Must not be finding the, uh, the food it was enjoying in the other section where it was kind of calm. Now it's a little more frenetic. Come on, buddy. Boy, it's... really moving. Can't even 
get a good focus lock on it. It's moving so much. Come on, buddy. Let's try and follow it a little bit. This is one of those tricky video games where you have to trace it in two planes and focus on the third plane all at the same time. And the uh, active area is very small. It's only a fraction of this field of view I have on the actual microscope. So, this is where a motor driven system would be really nice. You get like dial in the fixed speed of the swimming rate and then just kind of slowly move the controls in the direction of the travel. Get a much better view. But you can see on the leading edge there, at the apex, there's a kind of a line coming down from there in the middle of the, of the cell. That's where the kind of oral groove is. And as it's swimming around, it's trying to bring food particles into there to be made into food vacuoles, little vesicles, budding off the uh, cell membrane. It's really moving now. I'm gonna have to go to lower power. You guys are gonna get seasick from this. <laughs> he wins. The little guy wins. Let's keep him on lower power. It's much easier to follow now, at least, so I don't have to turn so much. See jerking swimming motion. Okay, well that's enough of this guy, I think. I might be able to find some other cool things on the cell on the slide. Let's go hunt. Ah, there we go. Look at all these guys. Wow. They're going nuts for this cluster of stuff. It's like a silly at Grand Central Station. I really like that area. change the uh, view of it shortly here. A little, little tiny guy moving there at the bottom, just to the left of the cluster. Uh, it's kind of in the edge of it at the bottom. Let's change the uh, lighting a bit here. There's some dark fields. Very tiny guy at the bottom left, taking off. Very jerky, like a um, like it's a flagellate. So it's not smooth. The ciliates are very like a sports car. They just come in, zoom, zoom, very directional, very purposeful. Back in, back out, turn around, flip around. And the flagellates tend to have a a wobbly motion, like if you've ever seen footage of a sperm cell swimming on a slide. I've got that giant flagellum making it swim all wobbly. Still has good uh, direction, but it's it's just it can't turn very fast, and it can't do complex rolls and reverses and stuff like a ciliate can. That's why the ciliates are my favorites to watch. They're just so much variety. In this case, behavior. 
So they're kind of poking around. Nothing over there. Seems to like this side now a little bit more. Whoa! And there's a big guy coming back for more. Yeah, cool. Now he found the spot. I can just camp here for a while. He's got a new circuit. You can see faintly in the background a couple small things coming and going, all different sizes. And there was an intermediate sized one that went cruising by. It's got a nice, uh, there it is. There's the little spiky guy coming back. are always interesting. Once you find one that they seem to like, it's really good to just hang out here. It's kind of like going looking for wildlife in a forest. Certain clusters of trees and bushes and stuff that the birds love. Just hang out there and you'll see so much activity. You go to another part of the forest or the jungle, you won't see that much. So you just you find some good spots and you just kind of camp out. See what you can see. And makes a much cleaner view. I don't have to constantly zip around and have a chance of you guys getting seasick. Oh, there's another one. I think that's the second uh, little Stylonkia looking thing coming through. These little guys, I'm not quite sure what they are. They're, they're too fast and too small to identify right now. You can see he's got some stuff stuck on some of his rear. Siri on the back of the, uh, the cell. It's got some, I don't know if it's stuck with surface tension or an actual kind of adhesive, but it's got some stuff on the back. Yeah, that one's clean. I think it's a different one. It's a nice little spot here. This is the uh, microscopic equivalent of a duck blind. You set up a little spot, just focus on it, camp out, and they just go about their business not even knowing you're there. In case of a duck blind, they're usually for hunters, but they're birders who don't kill birds. Also use the concept of duck blind, so they, when the birds get used to a structure, they won't think twice about it. You can just sit there and watch the animals do their natural behavior without fear of humans scaring him. Yeah, I've got enough of that for a bit. Let's go a little closer. Let's go 400 power. Let's see what these little guys are up to here. spot they like to hang out. Let's see what we can see. Get a little more light in here. There's one of the big guys. Let's get one of the small guys. Oh, there's a small guy. spot where they'll hang out for a bit. Get some nice close-ups. Very nice. 
guys. As well as little guys in the background, kind of out of focus. Very, very small sphere. And again, those guys are going up and down a bunch, so the focus is getting shifted. Really hard to get a clear shot. This is where a nice slow motion camera would be handy. To slow them right down, you can see all kinds of detail. Still get the bright image and the colors. I might do some preliminary stuff um, with a bolt on an iPhone. It does a pretty decent slow motion. For some of the fast swimmers. That's a very common spot down there. I think there's one up here that they seem to like as well. That was one behind the debris. So a good example of how thick this drop of water is. Actually some area to swim behind the debris as well. Peekaboo. <laughs> but it's too hard to see it. Let's go back where the action is here. spots. It's got a lower power. Still got plenty of life on the cell before it starts to dry. Switch back to dark field for some drama. And it's really good for seeing the particles too. Yeah, they all took off from that spot. That's a new hunting grounds. Debris field on the edge of the cell, on the edge of the slide, just past the cover. So I put just slightly more than a drop of water in here, so the surface tension can't, uh, it's too much volume to get it to stay inside the cover slip. So you can see the drying edge there, it's kind of a curved line of the, uh, of the actual um, edge of the water. There's a Clearly a man-made fiber there. Nice reddish color from someone's clothing, most likely. All you forensics fans out there, this is what they see a lot when they look for stuff at crime scenes and stuff. So if you're going to go out and do bad things, remember they can find this stuff pretty easily. Uh, okay. There's some tiny guys down there. Swimming around. Let's do a quick survey of the rest of the slide. guys took off to. We found a better cluster somewhere else. The tiny guys in the background. Ah, there you go. There's the terminator of the water starting to slide slowly evaporating. You can see that right there. Terminator line of the water drawing in as it's evaporating. Change it to a uh, 
different view you can see a little bit better the whole line and even more so now it's going to get dramatic movement as it starts to recede hey Manny how's it going sorry I didn't notice the chat it's been quiet here for a while so <clears throat> got some uh, evaporation taking place here <laughs> Soundtrack is Black Hole. Uh, it's a uh, free ambient generator because uh, as much as I love ambient music, I can't be bothered to make three or four hours of it. It just make me go to sleep. So I use one of these free online generators. There's a bunch of different. This one actually has, uh, I made a comment about Robbie earlier because it has a little kind of uh, FM sounding Tibetan bell thingy in here. It chimes once in a while. Let's get it to chime. some variety to the kind of uh, spacey soundscape there's a bunch of sliders and you can just bring in different elements like uh, stringy sounds and choiry sounds and some whooshes and rumbles like that one there's a little more drama to the stuff It's fun. I mean, they, they need more presets, but uh, I try to vary the mixer once in a while to make it a little more fresh. But um, there's some really good uh, stuff on the stream earlier. Lots of different ciliates collecting around clusters of debris. Um, and one of my favorites is one of the kind of Stylonkia guys, which is this kind of spiky, uh, kind of elongated like a paramecium, but but not as big and uh, very very active and has this kind of funny jerky motion it's like it's testing the waters and then it kind of bounces back like ooh I don't like that and it does that over and over and over again so consistent behavior there's some little guys here let's go in for that there's a little dude Dark field, maybe. A little oblique lighting is a little more dramatic. The dark, dramatic music. likes to go in circles a bunch so I can actually study it a little bit uh, you can see the uh, that pulse that means the water is starting to recede from evaporation this one's got some really sizable vacuoles in it look at that it either ate a lot or something else is going on in there. Yeah, it's a kind of wobbly, crazy motion that gets the cat's nuts. So one one night for sure. Uh, just for you, Manny, I'm going to do some teeth scraping and get some uh, some plaques on here and look for other things that might be in the mouth, as unpleasant as they might be. <laughs> Hopefully I don't find any protozoans, just bacteria, but you never know.
Yeah. Well, he, Rich Hilton was on one of the ones I was doing when I was, I was sick. I had a flu. And I put some of my nasty uh, yellow-green mucus on there that I had coughed up. And uh, that was quite a show. People were checking that out. Didn't quite know what it was until I told them. <laughs> a lot of dead cells in it. Um, tons of bacteria, of course. Doing a little brownie in motion dance. thing. Especially since people don't know what it was. I thought it was something from the kitchen, I think, at first. <laughs> I said, no, it's actually for me. <laughs> so. Because I do put a lot of stuff in the kitchen on here, too, like uh, fungus from uh, a bell pepper or um, cheese fungus. I did a show a while back. I did some cheese fungus. It was quite nice. Um, the bell pepper one was fun, though, because I actually kind of smashed it a little bit, put it on the uh, on this on this proper compound scope and not the dissecting scope, and you can actually see the um, the uh, sporangia. These little clusters look like hand grenades. It's really interesting. Look at that guy go. Yes, it was it was me being Flemish, and I don't mean uh, Belgian. <laughs> ah, keep on going the wrong way. I'm gonna practice on this thing. There's some nice colors though. Some nice structures like old leaf material from this. This is um, if you didn't hear the beginning, this is um, rainwater collected in a driveway nearby uh, with some out of decomposing leaves and who knows what else you have people walking through it cars driving through it dogs walking through it leaving all kinds of goodies behind and uh, made a pretty good slide this is still this first slide it hasn't dried up yet I've been on for about a maybe an hour or something like that 45 minutes Try a little dark field. This is some contrast here. Tricky part is to get it. This one's not so overexposed. This auto camera is kind of annoying. It's doing too much auto everything. you get a nice little pattern you can just kind of hang but this this kind of guy is just doing whatever the hell he wants yeah man if you listen to my um, curated streams on here not the live streams I have a bunch of Stuff either I've made or I made with a friend many years ago and some projects. Because um, they're like, you know, 15, 20 minute video clips at a time or less. So they're good to fit some little handmade tracks in there instead of this uh, automated kind of uh, generative music. Uh, little guys in the background there. Having better luck, I think, with the uh, oblique lighting. There we go, a little more oblique. That's even better there. There we go. And one of these nights, I'm going to put my face contrast optics in. It's a really nice views of these guys in face contrast.
greatest spits exactly yeah you you could be expectorant of my greatest spits <laughs> so pile on the puns This guy is fun, but I need to find some more. Uh, who else is here? Who else is here? Oh, there's one on the edge of this cluster, and I can zoom in. This should be nice. This is uh, 400 power. There's a little character right there. Yeah, the bacteria will look cool the face contrast. That's why I want to do it. Um, on here, they look like a bunch of little wiggly things um, with not a lot of detail, unless they're longer ones like the um, some of the, the zigzaggy ones, the the uh, sporilla type bacteria, the um, the bacilli and the um, the cocci, the spherical ones are, are unless you have a ton of them, they're not that interesting normal scopes, but face contrast should make it look nice and make it pop. This guy's just hanging out here. Looking for some goodies here. Let's see if I can make this pop a little bit more. Yeah. It's not giving me much latitude, but at least it's focused. See what it's up to here. So 400 power. Still, still fairly small. 400 power. This might be like around. Uh, mm, maybe 40 microns across that cell, something like that. I need to get my little micrometer out. Double check the measurements on that, but. Yeah, it'd be nice to put some of the newer stuff I made in these live streams, but they're just not long enough, so I'd have to curate a list ahead of time, and, you know, um, like the, the hardware jam I posted today uh, was pretty mellow, but um, short, you know, they, they want five minutes or less, so, um, we'll see, I might make a curated list at some point to stream in the background, but this time I can just be lazy, run this little mixer, tweak some sounds a little bit, and then co focus on the actual images and trying to follow these guys around. There's a little bit of a pad sound mixed in here. There's a vocal pad here. It's like Hearts of Space. I don't even know if that show's on anymore, but <laughs> old radio show. <laughs> if you uh, if you're feeling like it, man, you want to do some cool. Um, third wave demos or um, other cool things. I could put them in the background and say uh, special music by Dr. Synth. Get some, some cross promotion here. And get some more people to your channel. I think most of the people on your channel probably are on this channel because it's a lot of the same from from the people I see coming on here. A lot of them are from the uh, ProSynth Network or Kent Spong show. So might already be getting some of them, but might be kind of fun if you wanted to make some weird spacey stuff for, for microscope critters. And I got a couple things here. That one's not doing anything. This one's 
just kind of oozing along. It's funny because it's really connecting with the material, just kind of sloshing about. But it's not an amoeba, it's just a ciliate. of grass that were wet and some leafy material nearby. Come on, man. Get out of the tube. Yeah. This might be fun just to see. Attempted to do an oil immersion and get a thousand power on this guy because it's so still. I think it will. I don't have to clean the optics, but sometimes it's worth it. Oh, cool. Generative up there went nice. I wonder if they could do something like a Krell. You know the Krell patch that's real famous for like the the Buchla and you could do it on the uh, Zero Coast and um, even the Vocal Modular. I wonder if the people are doing any kind of like generative stuff on the third wave that'd be kind of interesting although it's really really bizarre stuff okay I have to position this guy here come down to the oil some bacteria there look at that so cool ah, this thing is so unforgiving with the movement there's some nice brownie motion bacteria cruising around a couple of uh, spirilla types little zigzags lightning bolts This one's actually got some uh, jerky flagella movement there. I could create a little microcurrent when I smash the slide with the lens. There's nothing in there. 
was that other guy that was on the edge? It's further up, maybe? Not finding another cell that was here. there of something. Oh, there's a... There's a yeah, there's a weird little clump of spheres there. Something. Not sure what that is. cruising by. Yeah, there's some kind of a current going through here. It's dragging a bunch of stuff with it. <laughs> wow. That's nuts. More goodies here. Yeah, not finding too much else other than bacteria. Let's do a quick swap with the uh, dissecting scope leaf debris and such. Some blades of grass that were quite wet. thought there might be some little things on it you could possibly see. Uh, 
nice view of the ridges of the grass there. If I can go any closer. Yeah, quite a bit closer. Yeah, there is some stuff swimming there. Look at that. Where is that swimming over there? That might be a very large cilia. This is fun about this kind of scope, as you can see, ciliates with that light passing through them, you see them kind of as they as they are with ambient light, not just light going through them. Yeah, that's cool. Hard to make out the details, but that is a little ciliate swimming on the grass. Submerged grass. Backlight. I can add a little more backlight to it. That helps somewhat. Okay, where'd it go? Ah, there it go. It's in the center. That's big enough. It might be a, a paramecium. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's a rotifer. I know that motion anywhere. It's doing that inchworming motion like a rotifer does. There you go. It's a little... So this is, this is a thousand cells, roughly, instead of a single cell. Rotifer. I don't know if I can get any closer. That's about it. I don't know if I can add any more light, either. max light for this setup. Although I do have a an extra light. Where did I put that damn thing? It's a little clip-on light. Might be able to use. Oh, I could use my cell phone. Let's try that. Let's crank up the light just a little bit more. Oh, thanks, Manny. Sorry, I missed. If you're still here, sorry, I missed your chat. But have a good rest. I'm hunting rotifers. There it goes. Now it's swimming off to the left side. That stretching motion is totally rotifer. Try this. I'm going to take the get rid of the oil lens here. Clean that bad boy off. again. Now I've got the grass under the compound scope. And I just got to find that guy that was swimming around before. Turn the light 
steps or penetrate that grass. See its shadow, but I think I went behind the grass. Let's see. Where did you go, Rotifer? Ah, there it is. Right in the middle. Very transparent, so you have to look for it. Let's just focus on it. Let's see. There it is, right in the middle there. Oh, it's almost off screen. It's not quite bright here as it should be. There it is. See that inchworm movement there? It's kind of contracting and expanding. That's uh, a rotor for climbing on the grass. So cool. So they can do inchworming behavior, they can do free swimming. They can also attach that foot that's using to do the inchworm motion on a structure and just sit there and pump away these uh, structures at the top of the body, essentially the head, and uh, suck in all kinds of particulates, filter feet, just like a clam or a mussel does. Just these guys are very tiny. I could have said they're about a thousand cells. Okay, it's right here, but it's not doing anything. Or did I lose it? It's hard because it's running into the grass where it's really thick. But you can clearly see the inchworm motion that there's it was doing before. See what's on this part of the grass. That's fun because you can see the individual cells of the grass. Let's zoom in on this a bit. I can't go too close because I don't have a cover slip on this thing. These grass cells. Let's see where it's torn here. It's got some stuff spilling out. cells. I have to focus a lot because it's, since it's not on a cover slip, there's a lot of z-axis focusing as it's kind of um, bumpy. It's got ridges. What is that on top of it there?
leaf that I picked from the leaf debris. You see it's already starting to grow. Some nice venation there in the leaves. But it's already starting to get some spots where the, the fungi are eating away at it. bit off on the camera. Uh, the natural color is more of an orangey color, but it's, it's pretty close. See how rigid the, um, the veins are. All that material is breaking away in the center, but it still holds the structure of the leaf. The veins persist. Floating by. Ooh, what is that? There is a dead critter. That might be a mite. That's cool. It's very dark on the, the camera. a mite. So the legs are too short to be a spider. I'm going to have to collect that if I can. Let's see. What can I do here? Is that the debris one? So I can extract that carefully to another slide. I've got a little mite. Got it. Aha. Very cool. 
through it and still get some structure and some color. It's definitely not a tick. Ticks have, uh, well, looks more like a mite than a tick. I don't know why this has looked at a tick. Mites generally have these uh, kind of chunky bristly legs and ticks are very clean looking more like a spider that doesn't have hair on it some spiders are pretty clean they don't have a lot of hairs on them uh, and it's got this kind of chunky body so I'm not sure where this guy came from but it's got a little bit of reddish color to it and I'm going to zoom in on it and see what we can see See the legs there, they're very bristly, reddish color. like that structure it's out of focus toward the bottom that might be I think, they call it an anal pore I think it's pretty much intact it doesn't seem to be smushed so program for a while, decided if I want to be a vet or a doctor or eventually a biologist. And uh, I used to look for ear mites, which are kind of interesting. Much more transparent than this. Um, kind of spiky, a little more spiky looking. They seem to their hair, don't they? I don't remember the legs being quite as hairy, but these little ear mites you'd find in a, in a dog's ear sometimes are pretty annoying. But they're so small, you need a microscope to see them. Smaller than this guy. This guy's pretty good size. This is um, 100 power. And it's basically filling the frame, almost. He's filling the frame with the camera, for sure. But he's almost filling the frame on the actual... View, field of view on the microscope. Pretty cool. 
cool. I don't know if this will work, but I'm curious if I can get it to work. I'm going to try to flip the slide. See if I can see him from the underside. It's risky, but it might be fun to try it. I might have to just basically put another slide on it to flip it, which might also squash it a little bit more. We'll see. But I want to see what the underside looks like. Oh, there we go. Yep, there's the underside. I did smash a little bit though when I did that. <laughs> Oops, sorry, mate. But you can see the legs pretty well there. So it's exactly where it was, but it got a little squash. You can see that debris field there. It looks like a star exploded. to the side it's all from the inside of the mite so my technique was definitely flawed I should have used a um, depression slide it has this like a little bit of a dip in it where you have a little more water volume and uh, I put too much pressure on the dead mite and squashed but you can see the legs pretty well here from the underside. The legs are still kind of in the same orientation as they were. Now let's go the hell let's zoom in a little bit and see what we can see. White parts. So the body squished pretty easily but the legs are really sturdy. They're still intact. Let's get a little color contrast there. You really see the shape of the body. It's still kind of intact a little bit. There's the legs. There's the head that got squashed. But the legs are roughly where they were. Just splayed out a little bit more and separated. Zoom in one more time. What the hell? It's a little tricky because it's an extra slide, and usually this thing doesn't like to have too much thickness at this level. thick to focus on it. 400 power needs more clearance. And I made it too thick with the double slide, so it was fun though. Got to actually find a mite. Let's go back to this view one more time with the um, tray. Let's go. Can't find anything else in here. Leaf. See the individual cells in the leaf there. Little dots. Seen a lot of critters swimming around in here. Some grass. 
with the different thicknesses of water here in different parts. You get some dark field mixed with some light field just with the different depths. found a tardigrade. He must have been on the grass. Very cool. That little, little tardigrade. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's zoom in on the tardigrade. Love these guys. So these guys are also about a thousand cells, like the rotor fur. There, there you go. Sorry, it's hard not to move the table. It's, it's in a pool of water, so it's going to wiggle a bunch. But this view is nice because it can swim much more than it can on a slide. So you see more what they act like when they're just kind of hovering in water versus um, confined to a, a, a narrow field of view of a slide. So this is more natural movement when they're in water. He's definitely struggling because he's he's upside down and nothing to grip onto. So oh there you go. Now he's righted himself. We can try and crawl. Oh, maybe not. You can see they have eight legs, two on the back section. And they're really interesting little critters. They have these little um stylets that poke out of the head that will stab prey suck the juices out of the prey and uh, you see one of my curated videos online you can see a dead one with the starlets kind of poking out as they relax it also may have been kind of squashed a little bit to, to force them to pop out but they're interesting little guys they have they're so specific in the animal kingdom that they have their own phylum. So we're in the phylum chordata, so we have chordate. But it's a dorsal hollow nerve cord. In our case, we also have vertebral column, all that kind of stuff. But it, we're all related to whether we're mammals, fish, birds, whatever. We're all chordates. Uh, these guys are, have their own phylum level, way separate from from arthropods and from chordates and from all kinds of stuff and um, uh, yeah, they have basically their own, uh, their own phylum tardigradia and I think they're about 600 species maybe a thousand species I forgot I have to go look it up but um, very special little guys um, they're called water bears a lot because they look kind of bulky like a bear. Stubby legs. They move around kind of clumsily like a bear does. Unless a bear's chasing you. <laughs> and um, they're also found on moss and grass and stuff like that. And so sometimes they're called moss piglets because you look at the face. The head is kind of a um, snout. Somewhere between a bear and a pig. Also reminds me of uh, South Park Man Bear Pig, but um, uh, anyway, yeah. So a couple different names for them, but Tardigrade is the is the standard name for the group. And uh, like I said, they have roughly a thousand cells, but they're still um, not massive. They're about. Um, I think they're about a half. I have to double check the measurements on it. It's on one of my videos for sure. I did all kinds of research on these guys as I was shooting footage and, and uh, reading about them. Just fascinating little critters. They've actually taken them into space. And uh, they have a survival function. Well, they're basically going to stasis. And it's not just like a hummingbird going into a torpor kind of thing, like a, like a temporary hibernation. 
they actually go into stasis where they curl up and kind of slow down their body function and even kind of have this kind of gelatinous function they kind of not desiccate but it's more gelatinous it's a, they give it a name called a tun state t-u-n and they're allowed to survive in incredibly harsh conditions from completely drying out like you find them on dry moss rehydrate the moss overnight which is what i've done and all of a sudden you find some tardigrades swimming in your collection that were hard to find before because they're basically dried up on some some moss uh, but they also took them into space and exposed them to the vacuum of space. Uh, and they were able to form this tun state and be revived from a vacuum. It's, I mean, most critters in general, even bacteria, don't make it through that. So these guys are real survivors in extreme conditions. And suppose there's even a, um, there was a, a have to go back and check the sources, but word has it that um, an actual scientific mission that was bringing some samples um, to the moon at one point had uh, either smashed or was spilled out somehow, so there are a bunch of tardigrades on the moon, apparently. <laughs> but since they're microscopic, you'd be almost impossible to find them. And uh, an earlier video I have with tardigrades under the dissecting scope. Uh, this one's got some color to it because it's been eating a lot of um, different color items. But they often have just kind of a uh, opaque, semi-translucent look to them and normal lighting, not this transmission lighting. And you can see in just barely naked eye, um, as tiny, tiny little dots in the water if you know exactly where to look but it's, it's difficult they're, they're very very small they're about um, about half a millimeter in size so quite small but big for microscopic item you can have a paramecium swimming right by them in fact look at some of the ciliates that are in here now the small ciliates they're uh, they're not too small compared to this guy. So, and they're all unicellular. He's multicellular. Or I should say he is, he is more of an it because they do have male, female, but I can't tell from this because it's not it's not carrying a cluster of eggs. And uh, you can also identify them from body parts, uh, the species as well. What the claws look like on this. You can actually see the little claws. If I can zoom in on this. Yeah, I can't risk it with this one. I'll have to transfer them to a slide if I want to get a better shot of them. But you can see the claws on the feet really well. So that's where the water bear concept comes in. It's got these kind of long bear claws on its feet. But yeah, this is a nice little guy. Let me collect them. Put them on a proper slide. You've seen how he moves freely. Um, and maybe real quick, just so you can get more natural lighting, I will transfer it to um, the dissecting scope so you can get a good look at it. Just make sure I can find it. Okay, it's right part of the dish. If I move this carefully, I shouldn't lose it. Get a quick view of it in the second scope you see it's translucent but it looks different than it did under the uh, this other scope Okay, where 
Where'd you go? So, so pin the tail on the tardigrade. I'm gonna find it here. Crystals of stuff. Some fibers in there. Okay, Tardigrade, where'd you go? I knew I should have grabbed it with an eyedropper when I had any other thing. It'd take a while to find it. And I shifted the tray. Started grade. There it is. I think. Hold on. No, not something else. That's another mite. That's a live mite. Got a bunch of mites probably out that grass, just like the tardigrade. transfer because the second scope is more forgiving with this object.
Yeah, got him. Got the mite. This one's a lot. I'll be careful with this one. I'm not going to get him squashed like that dead one was. Find the tire gray later. He's not going anywhere. Darkfield might. swimming around the mite. <laughs> it's pretty wild. I'll try to go a little bit closer here. I can just barely do it without a cover slip. I'm going to have a little more free swimming. Once I put a cover slip on, it's more restricted motion. Backlighting, you can see through its structure some different colors there. And I'll turn down the backlighting a little bit here at the contrast. And there's the through a lot to see all the leg parts all the way through the body and back to the other side for some
just for kicks, let's put a little cover slip on it. Let's see how it affects the uh, mobility. We might actually kick him out if I do this. Let me move this eyepiece out of the way a little bit. Put that down. Let's see where he left off. Yeah, see a much more constricted movement now. It's a much thinner playground. So he can't quite curl out his legs as much or fully stretch him out. Pretty big animal. And it's got some, it's got a couple of ciliates poking around it too. <laughs> There's one in the background there. Let's look at this one of those little Stylonkia guys. Top part here, he's poking around, looking for goodies on the, on the light. find that tardigrade because that's always a nice little specimen. Let's find the tardigrade. I'm not going to switch cameras yet because I'm going to move it so much it might get seasick here. Yeah, there's another mite right next to that one. It's dead. Got a lot of mites in this collection. Um, come on, Tardigrade, where'd you go? And another dead mite. Man, there's so many mites on this, this water collection. Must have been all over the grass. small to put them under a scope. And also they have a lot of area to cover.
some small pebbles in here. sphere there of something. little structures there. That's a perfect little cube there. Just like you get with um, iodized salt crystals. Dead mites. More dead mites. Come on, tardigrade, where'd you go? shuffled around when I picked it up earlier. It's so easy for the target before. Another mite, look at that. Live mite swimming there. Oh, there are mites everywhere on this thing. So if that mite was under there, the charter grid might be under there too.
Open the charter grade. Remember correctly, it's about the same size as that might. So, it's pretty, pretty easy to find it again. We're finding all kinds of mites. Forceps and see if that helps. These aren't the smallest forceps in the world, but they should work. No, they don't even join correctly. Terrible forceps. Hmm. I have found my proper ones in this place. Then. Positive he was not on that other slide with the. I only sucked up the one guy with the. Ah, 
Yeah, there was a nematode on that side too. Eh, I haven't had a nematode for a while. Let's do that. Look at the nematode while I look for the tardigrade elsewhere. Toes moving, they usually stay in one place. Typical lighting here. It's your standard microscope lighting without any special tweaks. Still nice. This is how 99% uh, of the world looks at stuff in a microscope. So, <laughs> a little more light, transparency. But yeah, that's the typical view there. Nice sinusoidal pattern.
second thought to this one. This guy's definitely moving more like a tick than a mite. This might actually be a tick instead of a mite. These other ones were mites, because this one definitely looks less hairy. It does look different than the other ones did. It's doing some nice walking on the uh, leaf here. Check this out. This is getting cool. Although it might make your skin crawl if you imagine this guy coming up to bite you. <laughs> Definitely looks more like a tick here than those other things that I thought were mites. Don't see these very often, so it's hard to tell. Let's turn off the uh, transparency. Get off the top lighting. Looks very tick like now. So it explain why it's on the grass, because ticks often wait for animals to walk by on bushes and grasses, and as soon as they kind of sense the uh, animal coming, they'll grab onto the hair, and then slowly crawl down to the skin, burrow in to get a nice blood meal, and if you're really unlucky, it'll give you Lyme disease or something worse some parts of the world. As long as you grab them before they actually burrow the head in, it's not so bad. It's just a pain with this once they bite you.
it's moving a lot like a tick. The last I saw that move kind of differently, even though they're similar. See if there's one in here. There's definitely another one in this collection of stuff. I should just try to get some more out of this water sample. But there's one in here somewhere. On a second turn grade. So I'll just lodge him if he's under the knees, underneath one of the leaves. Oh, is that one right there? So far, still looking.
It's just too, I think it's too small to be a tick. Ticks are pretty big. Look more like a tick, but it's very, very tiny. I don't on the slide, and I had on the other scope. I don't see it anywhere. Got nematodes, several nematodes. I don't see a tardigrade on here. And I didn't put it back in the water sample. Claws are pretty good about grabbing on this stuff. I don't see it grabbing on anything.
shot. Oh, my it's actually crawling underwater on some stuff. Let's see if I can get that in the shot here. Looks like the hair that's underwater there. <laughs> Gives you an idea how small it is. follicle the hair going around in a circle ooh look at that that's different that's some kind of larva it's a pink larva too are covered with some debris here. Just a 
much of that debris from the mouth parts there. Yeah, that's cool. Look at that. Oh, it's still moving, so it's not dead. This might be a um, larval pincher book. Earwig. Look at that. Quite a few insects, and now depending on where this is collected, it could have been on some leaves, it could have been in the water, or a combination of the maybe the soil nearby. I did kind of a, a wide sample on this particular collection, but there are quite a few insects that have a aquatic larval stage or nymph stage. So, you know, it kind of looks like a head of a pitcher bug. Sure, what it is. Pretty cool though. You can see all the black eye spots there, the pincher, mouth parts. The body's pretty opaque, I can't see much going on inside there. But it's definitely a, a larval stage before it gets to be a. You know, they have a bunch of moltines and then they become an adult with the proper six legs. Skeleton, so it's got a caterpillar stage. There's little, little legs there on the body. Larval stage. Not that head though. Little orange head. Little black dots for eyes. Breathe. 
target, look for him another night. It could be underneath his leaf, it could be a transfer by accident, but I couldn't find it on the slide. So weird. All mites. sometimes but that's crazy 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 I'll do it one more sample I didn't look at yet so driveway puddle had a long color to it. I thought, what the hell? Let's see what's in this collection. Okay, 
this one way around here. This is another uh, puddle of rainwater. This one's in a more trafficked area. I had a lot more cars driving through it, people, dogs, uh, in general, some leaf debris, you can see the colors here from all that, but also some darker stuff I was picking up with it. It's gonna be dirt. This guy definitely moves like a uh, flagellate. It's got the kind of jerky motion. It's going in a circle a bunch, but he's also, when he moves, Kind of jerky looking and tumbling like he's uh, has less control of his swimming technique. See there. See some structures in there. Looks like a bunch of vacuoles. So again, it probably had some meals. So those little food vacuoles could be something else. Now it's behind the cluster. Let's uh, continue looking elsewhere. got to focus a lot. Some of these guys like to go up and down the z-axis a whole bunch. It's way too much focusing.
objective. So they're going to hunt. The other ones kind of attach and just suck the food in, create a little vortex. And so one of those kind of a mixture of the two, or they do the inchworming thing. We saw them doing on the leaf earlier, the grass leaf. Oh, the two of them. Nice. See how much depth there is, too. Look at that. I'm in focus of this guy, and the other guy's way in the background out of focus. There's a lot of damn water on this slide. Now he's got the foot attached. Detaches the foot, swim, go from place to place, and then does a little pivot on the foot, deciding where to go, and then can detach at will. Put it together, that's cool. Go on the sense of degree. should just about do it uh, several hours here. It's about 1.30 my time. Time to get some sleep for once. So I'm going to watch this afterward. Thanks for catching up on the stream. Thanks to Manny, Dr. Synth for joining, having a little chat. And uh, keep enjoying the streams. Feel free to make comments and uh, some of my other live streams or curated short videos and stuff. And uh, always remember to have fun and stay curious. Thanks, everybody. And uh, hope you enjoyed this.